Hey friends, welcome to another Upcycle by Brie. Today I've got a thrift to treasure video for you where I'll take these two bread boxes and transform them using DIY paint and products. If you're interested in purchasing either bread box or the paint I'm using, you can find them on my website at upcycledbybrie.com. Also, if you love thrifting, trash to treasure videos, and furniture flips, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. All right, let's do it. I got a double score with these bread boxes. I found them both here at my favorite thrift store in town called The Giving Tree. They were both in very good shape. This one had a sticker of $8 and the other one was 5 Both of them did need cleaned up. As you can see when I open this one, it has some pesky oil spots that I knew was going to cause some bleed through. I'll show you how I tackled that later on in the video. And this roll top you can tell was handmade, still in very good shape, but it was gross inside. So deep clean for this one, and I wanted to seal that wood inside as well. All right, moving on to the next step. All right, a few basic cleaning supplies, a TSP substitute that I have mixed with water in my sprayer. I also have a bottle brush from the Dollar Tree and a razor scraper, a couple of clean towels, boom. Here I'm using the razor scraper to remove the price tag, which is important when you're flipping items. Then I'll use lemon oil to remove any sticker residue. Next, I'll spray the inside out with a little canned air to remove dust before moving on to the TSP solution. A few times over with the TSP cleaner, wrestle off the hardware, and clean the inside we are good to go moving on to the second bread box when i'm doing multiple items i like to complete the same step on all the pieces before moving on it helps me um, stay efficient again using that handy brush to get down and clean in between the roll top that wasn't too bad but i like to thoroughly clean all of the pieces especially when i'm reselling them a little more canned air. Here I'm assessing the letters of the word bread and they were stenciled or painted on. It is raised, so I'm gonna have to handle that. Here I'm sanding off the letters. Normally I would take it all the way off, but it was almost stained into the wood. Um, I felt it and I knew it was smooth. Three coats of Zinsser shellac inside and out of both these pieces to seal in any stains and prevent bleed through. Now that the pieces are cleaned and primed, it's time for paint. Beadboard by DIY Paint is the color on this bread box. Look at the consistency of this paint. Super pigmented, nice and thick. The coverage is absolutely amazing. And I'm using my favorite Palm Pro by Zebra and a Paint Pixie brush to get into the details. Only one and a half coats is what it took to cover the piece on the inside. I was using my heat gun to speed up drying time in between and also help me prevent from bumping the paint as I'm working in through the corners. As you can see, all of those oil spots are gone. The shellac worked, no bleed through. Here on the back of the piece, the bleed through was really bad, so I thought I would film it uh, to see if it popped through and how I was going to combat that, but thankfully it didn't. And as you can see, nice bright white inside and out beautiful coverage with that diy paint such a fresher look than before time to pick out some hardware i keep all of my hardware in this cabinet i know exactly which pole i want and it is a matte black cup of pole i'm really digging these anything that i have been putting these poles on lately sell super quick. 
I wanted to add a little more than just the cup hole, so I decided to bust out my Cricut. Please excuse the fact that I used my pants as a towel. Here, my Cricut is cutting out and doing all the hard work. Now it's time to weed out my vinyl. I removed the excess vinyl from around the word and on the inside. After that, you have the word bread. Next up, I will grab my transfer paper and cut a piece down to size. I remove the transfer paper off the backing and place it over my word, rubbing it down. That will transfer the vinyl onto the transfer tape. Then the transfer tape sticks right to the front of the bread box and I can transfer my word bread onto the front. I do a quick measurement to make sure it is even and then I use my scraper tool just pressing the vinyl letters down onto the front of my box. I did not seal this piece before I put my vinyl on but I did use a 220 grit sandpaper to sand it smooth first. In the moment of truth, making sure the lettering stuck, so far so good. Little piece came up here, so I'm pressing it down again, and voila. Next up, just making some quick measurements to mark the holes for the cup hole. Then I will use my drill and a teeny little drill bit to make some pilot holes. If I don't do this step, I will strip out those little screws when I'm trying to attach the new hardware. After I have my pilot holes in, it's time to wax before attaching the new handle. Of course, I'm using my DIY clear wax and a waxing brush. We'll do one coat, long consistent strokes, and then we will wipe the excess off with a clean paper towel. The inside of the bread box gets a food safe oil to seal, and this is just a food grade mineral oil off of Amazon. I then attach the hardware Give it a little shine and the bread box is complete. Here we are starting bread box number two. I am painting this one with DIY Little Black Dress. I highly recommend a Lazy Susan when you're painting. It makes this job so much easier. I'm trying to avoid the tracks that the roll top set in. That way it doesn't get stuck when rolling. You guys, look at this one coat coverage. Can you imagine how far a can of paint will go if you only have to paint on one coat? Here it is, one coat and done. I moved down to the garage to sand this piece so I didn't make a huge mess all over my office. And I am going to seal it with a few coats of water-based polyacrylic on the outside. Just to make sure on this next step that my Black paint and white paint didn't get all mixed together. On this piece, I was able to just lay down a yardstick and draw a pencil line on either side. Use the pencil line as a guide to lay down my frog tape. Then I'm using my beadboard on the inside of the tape lines to create the main stripe for my grain sack stripes. The heat gun was a terrible idea. It melted the tape to my polyacrylic and of course that pulled up the paint and the poly and everything else. Now, I knew I was distressing this bread box so it was okay. If I was doing furniture, I would have taken my time and done it correctly. Time to make the small stripes. I'm laying two pieces of tape over my main stripe. I laid them wide enough to create an overlap. On the outside, of that overlap. I left a small space. I placed tape on the outer edge and painted the beadboard in my blank spaces. If you want me to make a more detailed video on grain sack striping with painter's tape, just leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to do that. All right, final reveal. And again, you see right here, it pulled up a little bit of the paint. That's okay. I actually am digging it. 
All right, we're going to roll with this look and we are distressing the piece even more. Now I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper and the only reason I'm able to do this is because I had sealed the dark black paint with the polycrylic. Otherwise, the black paint and the white paint would have all sanded together and I would have had a big gray mess. I also like the way that the polycrylic looks with a little bit of sanding over it. It gives it a beautiful distressed look. The entire outside of the piece got DIY clear wax and again, food safe mineral oil on the inside of this piece. Look at it bring back the shine. All right, let's take a look here at the final products. I just love how these bread boxes came out. And of course you could use them for things other than bread. I had one staged up with my supplements and some fruit. It's a great way to get all of the clutter off of your kitchen counter, get a fresh clean look for the new year. Do you guys have any clutter you need to get taken care of? These bread boxes will be available on my website, upcycledbybree.com, only until January 13th, 2021. After that, they'll head up to my retail booths. You can also find the DIY paint and products I used on my website and in both of my booth locations. I'll be sure to put information and links in the description box below. Which bread box makeover was your favorite? Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know. Also, please share and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can also find me on social media at Upcycled by Brie on these other platforms. I will see you next Sunday for another video where I will be making a chic, not cheap Valentine's Day wreath. Bye friends.